What's up guys, this is Heiss, and today we're coming at you from the Colorado Railroad Museum once again. We're in the shop in stall four, and behind me is the Denver and Rear Grand Western number 346. 346 is in the midst of getting its 1,472 day service inspection, where all of the flues are removed, and the locomotive gets taken apart, assessed, lots of mechanical things get fixed, so. We haven't talked about it too much on the channel, but recently I've gotten a couple comments on Railroads Online videos and other videos talking about deckless engines. Either I'll say the term deckless engine and someone doesn't know what it means, or people see the engines in Railroads Online and it doesn't make sense to their image of what a steam locomotive cab looks like in their head. So I figured, hey, let's talk about the deckless part of a deckless engine. And what better way to show it than 346 not having a tender? There's no deck. You have the engineer's side over here, and then you have the fireman's side over here. And the only deck that you have is the gangway, which is normally attached behind the locomotive. So when you're in the cab as a fireman, you've got a boiler on your side. When you're in the cab as the engineer, you've got a boiler on your side. And that's just the way that these old things are set up. Let's go take a look at the RGS-20 to take a look at what one looks like when it's put together. Okay, here we are over at the Rear Grand Southern number 20. You can see that we have the tender back here. This is the front tender beam right here and platform on top. And then we have the apron that sits on the engine and rides on the actual tender shovel sheet itself. Let's climb aboard. You can see that 20's tender is empty. We almost had a coal shortage at the end of Polar, so we had to transload 20's coal over into the 491. Thankfully, we were able to get coal. But anyways, back to the subject here. It's a smidge dark in there, isn't it? Well, not sponsored, but I got sent to me very recently. This Olight flashlight. They, did, they sent it to me for free, full disclosure. They didn't really ask me to do much with it other than maybe show it in a video, and I was kind of impressed with it, so. It's nice in that it's got multiple brightnesses and then a turbo mode if you double tap it. When it's set on turbo, I mean, it puts out something like 2,500 lumens, which is pretty significant. And what was nice and impressive to me is that you can sit there and you can clamp it on your hat. And it's definitely not a light flashlight by any means, but it means I can gesture to you and show things off without having to use my hands, which is really nice. This is 20, I'll put together inside the cab. You can see that you've got fold-out seats that just have this little stand right here. So as you raise them up, they sit up like that, and you have no backrest. These locomotives are not made for comfort compared to a much more modern style of locomotive. This is an older design, really common on narrow gauge engines, on the early narrow gauge engines, and also decently common on some of the smaller standard gauge power. For instance, the uh, Norfolk and Western 475 at the Strasburg Railroad uses the same setup as well. I'm sure there are others. Comment down below about a deckless engine you know about so that we can learn more. 346 is interesting in that there's actually a second seat in front of the fireman's seat for the head end brakeman, which would be just absolutely cozy. But you can see that the boiler comes all the way pretty much to the back cab wall. There's a very narrow shelf right in there and there's really not room for much. So in order to see the pressure gauge, we have to look through the window. 346 doesn't have a window, so we don't have that luxury. You gotta peek around the door. We also have interesting things like the access to the water glass shutoffs behind panels here, or in the case of this one, just right through the cab wall. And then the world's most difficult to try and reach tricocks back in there. For 20, there's not really space to have the oil cans where they'd normally live on the shelf back there. So they have to live down on the floor next to the boiler where they stay relatively warm. But it gets a little interesting because as you're sitting as the engineer, flip the seat up, Johnson bar is directly next to you. This is your bar. When I sit in that seat, that bar is right up against me. Let me show you. Here I am sitting in the seat with the Johnson bar in the center. And you can see just how little space there really is right here right now. It's nice and tight, so you end up with the bar and forward while you're running typically, and if you're sitting in the seat, so it's out of your way, but it's really cozy in here. You're not usually having one foot on the stirrup, and I tend to swing the other one. 
but that's about all the space you have and all your controls for your air brakes are off to the side of your head because that's the only real place for them. So otherwise you've got a boiler right there. Now, one thing that's interesting to talk about and interesting to note that I can't show you right now because they're not installed is the cab doors. Most of these little engines also had doors built into the cab and ours are removed right now because they're frankly quite a pain to deal with around here at the museum when we got the engines in and out of service all the time and all that. But on the Rio Grande standard practice, the doors would open up in two different ways. The fireman's side door would be hinged on the outside so that as the door opens, it opens this way to block the exit down. And that's so that the fireman can go into the cab, get what he needs to get, and then come right back out to shoveling right here. But the engineer's side would be reverse of that. So the engineer's side, you can see, is hinged actually on the same side. You'd expect it to be mirrored, but it's not. And that's so that the engineer can open his door and he can go get down and oil around the locomotive. The engineer doesn't need to come over to where the fire door is. The fireman doesn't need that space. Why have it open the other way? The CNS was wrong. There's open that way and that's a pain in the butt. It's how you know the Rio Grande was better. The air compressor doesn't agree. Now this is all in very much contrast to a much more modern cab style, such as on the Denver and Rio Grande Western 491. You can see we've actually got seats with backs. Imagine that lumbar support and they're heated seats. These are steam coils. Look at that. My cars don't have heated seats, but this 1928 steam engine does. But much more ergonomic because we have a deck. This is a normal cat. This is what you'd expect. It's not deckless because there's a deck right here that we can stand on and you can transition up and down into the two different seats from the deck. Deckless engines are not super, super common and they're definitely on the smaller scope of things and usually on the older, older scope of things as well. They're really neat and they're definitely a big part of narrow gauge history and early standard gauge history as well. So if you liked this little look at what a deckless engine is, please let me know in the comments below, particularly as well if you've got a deckless engine you'd like to share with us. And as always, thank you so much for watching everyone. We'll catch you all next time.